Okay, so what is the molar volume? It is the volume of a mole, but how do you know what the volume of a mole is uh, when you have two components? And what we're going to do is, well, so let's see, molar volume, volume of a mole. Uh, we've said that already in the previous video. How do we calculate it? To calculate it, we're going to take, and we're going to take an average molar mass by um, mole percent or mole fraction. We're going to divide it by the density. So if you're keeping track of units, which I love to do, it's going to be grams per mole divided by grams per milliliter. And you can see that the uh, grams will cancel out, and this will leave you of units of milliliters per mole, which is a volume per mole, which is the molar volume. Um, and so I'm going to put the molar volume here. And the molar volume is going to be equal to, so the average molar mass, by that I mean I'm going to take the mole fraction of 2-propanol times the molar mass of 2-propanol um, plus the mole fraction of water, which is just 1 minus the molar mass, the mole fraction of propanol. So that's going to be like 0 0.98, 0 0.97 something for this one, times the molar mass of the water. So that's just a um, mole fraction of each one times its molar mass. So that's like a weighted molar mass. And then I'm going to divide it by our density. And that is the molar volume of the right there. And uh, let's see, I don't have anything that references a cell that's not in this row, so I'm just going to copy and paste this down. Yep, and that is the molar volume. And, um, and if we plot the molar volume versus mole, uh, mole fraction of 2-propanol, you will see that the two lines are very close to each other. They're not nearly as nice as this density curve right here. Um, but what we're going to do is now we're going to calculate the excess molar volume. And the excess molar volume is the difference between the molar volume and the ideal molar. Let's see. So this is going to be between the measured molar volume and the ideal molar volume. And so the ideal molar volume will be based on the uh, pure components. So this right down here, this is the density and the molar volume for zero mole fraction of um, two propanol, so pure water. And this one here is going to be for pure 2-propanol. And so um, what this is going to look like is it's going to look like, first off, the molar volume. And we're going to subtract the 2-prop uh, mole fraction times uh, its perfect, ideal, pure component, we could say, molar volume. Um, and we're also still in parentheses, so we're subtracting this off. It's going to be the one minus the mole fraction of two probe. That's just the mole fraction of water times the mole, molar volume of pure water. And when we do this, we get a very small number that is negative. Is that right? That is right. Density less, well, we'll figure this out in a minute. <laughs> we'll figure out what it all means in a minute. But I will point out that oops, we do have 
K19, which is not in the same row. So I'm going to put my dollar signs in there so it knows to always reference that cell. Like that's the permanently reference the cell. Don't pay attention to the row markers as we've talked about. And this one's down there as well. So now I can click and drag and I get all negative values. And so let's see. So the densities are lower than the pure, than the ideal, because that's what this says right here. And the excess molar volumes are negative. Huh. Well, let's plot it out. Because now uh, I am going to do one thing, which is I am going to put in an extra row here. So cells, insert. I tried graphing this when I was trying to do this before, and it was just too confusing for my little computer. So I'm going to copy and paste the mole fraction on here, and then I'm just going to turn these into a graph. And I get a nice curve like this, which is what I'm expecting. Um, and what we're saying, this is the excess molar volume for uh, two propanol water solutions. And this is exactly what I'm expecting. The density is lower. Right, it's invert. I have to think about this, but this is what it's supposed to look like. So good for us. And what I will want you to do is now you can, with this in the previous video, turn um, your data that you've collected into excess molar volume. And please work on it. Please talk to me. We'll work it out together. Uh, and um, then you'll have a complete set of videos to watch when you watch the other ones too, I think.